Welcome to our introduction of how to use the Ultraport HL7 listener to receive HL7 messages over TCP IP. We've already downloaded and installed the listener from our website. You can get to it here, uh, hermitechnz.com. You can download, purchase, get to all the online help. Um, we'll come back to that. What we're going to do is start the Ultraport listener up, activate it, configure it, and receive HL7 messages and we're going to do all of this in less than 15 minutes. When you start the program for the first time you have to agree to the end user license agreement. It's boilerplate. You can read it if you want. We want to use online activation. This means it'll go over the internet. It'll just take a few seconds to do. You can use manual activation if you're trying to activate a license on a server that uh, is not connected to the internet. So I'm going to indicate that I've already purchased a license. I'm going to continue. I'm going to say that this is the first time this installation, or this product's been installed on this computer. Next, I have to enter my Hermitech account information. You have to have done this in order to purchase or download the listener, so you'll know what this is. So I enter my customer ID and my password, and next I put an identifying comment about this computer. It will default to computer colon and the name of the computer but I can make this whatever I want so uh, my desktop something 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 the blue one and then click activate when you're ready and we're off to the races it'll pull up a list of all the licenses for the ultraport listener that I own as you can see I have licenses that I own for the Ultraport Listener 3-port license. I own two, and I've activated none of them, so I'm going to use one of them right now. So I click the Activate button, and it pulls up a warning <clears throat> that says, Do you want to activate this license? If you do, you're going to use it up, and it won't be available to use on another computer. So I say yes, and my license has now been activated. <clears throat> So the Ultraport listener starts. It's not ready to use yet. We still have to configure it. But before we do that, when you start the program for the first time, what I'm going to recommend is that you uh, go to the Tools menu up at the top on File, Tools, Help. You can see it up there. And download the free HL7 TCP IP router simulator. 32 or 64 bit doesn't matter. We're going to use this tool later to test our listener once we get up and running. You can also get, if you want to download this router simulator, use it someplace else. You can get to it in the online help for the listener. You just pop open the help and you can find it down on the left hand menu toward the bottom HL7 simulator and you can download it directly from here. This is a free tool and it's worth 10 times what you pay for it. Next we're going to go to the global settings. This will affect all of our listener profiles. You always want to make sure that you check these and we're going to go through them one at a time. Number one, saving the acknowledgments. If you check this box it will save the HL7 acknowledgments that your listener sends back to your trading partner. So when you receive a message, the listener will typically send back an ACK. If you want to keep those, you can check this. You don't really need to, though. You can get everything you need out of the traffic logs. Section 2. Do this. Always make sure this is checked so that you keep a traffic log of all the messages that you've received. <clears throat> Now down in section three, the system logs, the, as the programs are running, it'll keep uh, some just basic uh, logging information and some files in the installation folder. The, you can set the log level here. Typically, simple is what you want unless you're experiencing some problems and you want more enhanced logging. Next, file maintenance. How long does it actually keep these log files for? <clears throat> or archived uh, acknowledgments and finally CPU allocation uh, those are more advanced you can refer to the online help as to what that does 
999 times out of a thousand you're not going to need them. So once you're done you click save and now we're ready to create our first listener profile. It tells you right on the screen what you need to do. Click the new button or select file new listener profile from the main menu. I'm going to do that and we're going to work this screen from top to bottom and from left to right. So, <clears throat> the first thing we have to do is give it a name. <coughs> Every listener profile has to have a name. It has to be unique. doesn't matter what it is. In section 2, we're going to set the port number. What is the port that we want to receive HL7 messages on? Pick one at random that's not being used. I'll say 5,000. And now I'm going to set the acknowledgement. I've got it set to automatic. What that means is the listener will examine the messages as they're streaming in, and if the message says that an acknowledgement is needed, it will send an HL7 ACK back to the sender. In section 3, we're going to set the data folder in the file extension. The data folder is where do you want the listener to put HL7 messages as it receives them. Typically, you're going to want to use a local drive, your C drive or D drive. Uh, if you need to use a network share in AS storage, see the online help. I set the file extension to HL7. I could just as easily set it to text. It'll show you how your files are going to be named. It's a date timestamp, a rolling number, and then the ID, which is that short number, and then HL7. In section 4, these are your HL7 standard uh, message enveloping characters. Again, 999 times out of 1,000. You can leave these to what they are. If they're different, you should know. In section 5, I'm going to enable the profile. And next, I'm going to select what service I want this profile to run in, which Windows service. We give you four. There's no right or wrong answer to here. You can create all your profiles and have them run in service 1 or you can divide them up amongst the Ultraport listener services so that uh, you get some dynamic uh, load balancing or what have you. I'm done with that. I click OK and I'm done configuring it. Now we're ready to run the Ultraport listener. First thing we're going to do is we, we just want to test it just to make sure that it works and we're going to test it twice. First thing we're going to do so we're going to run the listener profiles locally. This means we're going to run it as a desktop application in an immediate window. I just click run locally, click start up at the top, and there it is. We are running, and this is what you're looking for. The listener started, and it's bound to port number 5000 in this case. Now, I just need something that will send the HL7 messages to me so that I can verify that everything works. And now we're back to that Ultraport router simulator that we had you download at the beginning. So you can see on this, I've got it configured to send to this computer, to send to port 5000, down under, uh, it'll wait for one second for an acknowledgement, and down under the HL7 data file, I've chosen a data file that. Uh, now all of our programs ship with a, a little file called anonymous.hl7, but you can choose any valid HL7 data file. And finally, I'll just say I want to begin the simulation. And it's done. It sent 18 messages, and it received 18 acknowledgments. Over in my listener, you can see that I received 18 messages, and I sent back 18 acknowledgments. Now, <clears throat> If I go to this folder in Windows Explorer, I should see 18 HL7 message files. Because of our the way our profile is set up, they should have an HL7 file extension. And there they are. 18 files. Now I'm going to delete these because we want to test it now again. And here's why. This is important. We've tested it running as locally. That's running it as a desktop application. What we want to do next is test it running as a service. Now as you can see, if you look at the screen, uh, Service Instance 1 is not installed. 
uh, it means it's not registered in the Windows services. You can see that it has one listener tied to it and it needs to be installed. We can fix all these problems by just clicking install Windows services. And it's done. Now we can see that it has been installed. It is currently stopped. It's not running. The start mode is automatic. All I need to do now, well actually if I want to do it, I click the open Windows services. I want to see it and just scroll down to the use for Ultraport and we should see our Ultraport listener service. And there it is. Okay, set up automatic and it's running his local system. So I'm ready now. I just start the services. Tells me it started and it is currently running. So now I want to run the simulation again. Now the reason you want to test this twice is because the if when you're running it as a service, it's running as a different user. And if I look at my folder, there are my 18 files again. And that is how easy it is to run the Ultraport listener to set it up and configure it. From download to activate to configure to run, we have done it all in less than 15 minutes.